when this is like the mother load, right? This is the best time in history to build your business. Number one, people are just sitting out their houses and just can't wait to talk to somebody. This is what I believe. I'm sharing that with you for nothing. Just get out there and succeed. Cool, so where are you guys at? Idaho Falls, Idaho. Idaho Falls, nice. Is there like a bunch of waterfalls or something? <laughs> yeah. The smallest waterfalls you've ever seen. Smallest? It's an extreme one. Wow. <laughs> that doesn't sound too exciting. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty area. It's kind of funny that we were named after the falls that we were named after. You would think it would be like a Niagara. Yeah. But it is. I'll send you a video of it a little later. Cool, cool. <laughs> So do you, you guys know my story and stuff, or do I need to kind of give a little background? No, go ahead, please. Okay, um, I've been in real estate since uh, 2002. I uh, went through the, uh, I made a million dollars before I was 23, uh, lost it all in the crash, went back to roofing houses, worked on an oil rig for a while, that was 2006 and seven. And I read 100 books during that time and really tried to figure out why I went bankrupt and lost everything, was sleeping on friends' couches. 2008, I got back in real estate because I was laid off from the oil rig, and um, I started. I like I realized somewhere in one of those books or something that uh, the reason why I lost everything and the reason why I didn't have a business that could withstand like a market downturn or a market crash was because I was so focused on the deal and the and the closing and getting the contract signed. I wasn't even really paying attention to the people, you know what I mean? Like building the relationships. I didn't have to because back then you did a deal, you knew list is something, you had multiple offers in a couple of hours and then you sold it and that person wasn't even interested in rebuying. They just made a hundred thousand on something they bought six months ago and they weren't definitely weren't gonna buy something for a hundred thousand more than they just bought something for. So they were kind of out of the market anyway and I just went and did it again over and over and over again. So I was kind of introduced into that market and it kind of ruined me a little bit, but it was a blessing in disguise because it made me go through all the stuff I went through to learn what to learn. So long story short, uh, got, got, got back in in 2008 and started just building my business on people, not deals, not trying to go after deals, just seeing what I could do to help people. And I built the database and started doing a weekly email. And uh, by 2014, I was selling 100 properties a year. Okay, I'm just a single agent, one assistant, and since then I've sold 100 properties every year since. Um, and I was the number one Remax agent in Alabama three times. And uh, what else? I uh, wrote two books a couple years ago, started coaching for free. Uh, I've got the fastest growing real estate coaching program. Uh, I'm the only coach and it's a free program. And I'm basically just sharing what I've learned, you know, through this two decades of uh, of madness and a roller coaster of a career. So, and it's kind of led me to this point where we're in this little market downturn. I've really kind of been preparing for this ever since 2008 when I got back in the business. And I gotta say, I'm set up pretty well. So, that's the gist of it. Um, if I could get maybe a question or two from you guys so I can see what direction to go with this, it'd be good, great. One thing you gotta understand is that we all have to play by the same rules, you know? So the people that, you know, in the areas where you can't show property and you can't do this and you can't do that, well, so, I mean, that goes the same for all the other top producers. So, you know, it's not like somebody has an advantage over another person. So now what do we do? Well, we gotta figure out a way to be more productive than everyone else using the same rules that everybody else has to abide by. So like right now, there's not a lot of transactions going on. There are some transactions, it's not dead. Um, it's definitely, the market is definitely alive. I'm still selling a few things here and there, but it's not like it was. Normally in March, I'll sell about 30 properties. In this March, I sold two. I've sold one in April so far. I'm trying to get a second one under contract. So it's definitely slower, right? But the thing is, is everybody wants to grade their own paper based on their transactions and showing properties and going to listing appointments and stuff like that and to me that's a very small piece of the puzzle 
for me, market share is, is how many property owners, what percentage of property owners in your area um, that you have a lifelong relationship with, that know you, that you've talked to verbally, that you're building a personal brand with through whatever avenue that is. Like, think about it for a second. If you have a population of a million, okay, how many property owners out of that million know who you are and you know, probably may consider you as their agent, right? That's market share to me because whoever is building that and, and trying to you know, build their name in the market, you know, whoever owns the most percentage, okay, we're talking about market share, whoever owns the most percentage of that is who owns the market. You know, even if an agent only did 10 deals last year, but they picked up a thousand new relationships with property owners, I'm gonna put my money on that guy over the guy that sold 50 properties this year. You know, because I know I know where his career is going. See, so if you look at that and just based on transactions and you say, oh, 50 versus 10, I'm gonna go for the 50 guy, but you don't realize there's this underlying factor of how hard that guy's working you know, when nobody's looking to make those calls and build those relationships. So right now, during a market downturn, you know, and this is like the mother load, right? This is the best time in history to build your business. Number one, people are just sitting out of their houses and just can't wait to talk to somebody. I did live calls on YouTube uh, two Thursdays ago. Uh, you guys should go watch that. The people just talk forever, it's hilarious. But people are just dying to talk to people right now. And if you were the if you were the agent that called them during the pandemic to check on them and see how they're doing, you're not trying to sell them anything. You're trying to talk to them like they're your mom, dad, brother, cousin. You know, like what kind of how are you doing through this? How are you guys doing? I've been working at the house for three weeks. This is crazy, isn't it? Like talk to them like they're your mom, dad, or brother. And that's when you really start to get through to people. That's when people start to notice who you really are, not the scripty you know all the all the regular training stuff out there just sucks you know just throw it away put it in a pile burn it because all the objection handling and the uh, 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 you know like you know if they're not motivated to do something really soon then just you know discard them kind of deal is ridiculous you know any human that you can talk to and create a relationship they're gonna buy or sell something at some point in their life you're there spending that, you're, you're in the moment where you're talking to them anyway, why are we gonna throw this person away? You know, let's build a relationship with this person. You know, the more, more time I waste on people, the more money I make. I mean, it's just been the case, like for now example, for example, I'm wasting time I'm talking to you guys, right? But this is gonna in turn help me build my personal brand more and more and more, because now you guys are gonna join my free coaching, you're gonna start following me on social medias and stuff like that. All that stuff adds up. I mean, it just adds up to something big. So a lot of people won't do what I'm doing, a Zoom call with some agents they never heard of for free. You know, they won't do that kind of stuff, but I'm willing to do these kind of things. It's, you know, it's the same thing in real estate. I'm willing to sit in a room. I've been making calls eight hours a day right now, calling, checking on people, seeing how they're doing. And people are gonna remember that you called them during this time. You know, they're gonna see you as their agent. I mean, they're gonna be like, that's my, that's my agent right there. You know, they didn't call, because a lot of agents are like, I don't want to call right now, I think it's insensitive, because people are going through stuff, and um, you know, they're not going to want to buy or sell something right now. You're not calling them to try to get them to buy or sell something. You know, you're calling to check on them to see how they are doing, you know, and to build your brand, right? So you're trying to, you're trying to grab market share. Now is the best time I've ever seen to, to, to build your market share in the market in terms of what I just said. The percentage of property owners who know who you are and like you and feel comfortable with you. That's your number one job is to make people feel comfortable with you. How do you do that? By being comfortable with them. Um, you know, like talking at the right speed, you know, with the right tone, you know, with the right relaxedness, with the right intentions, right? So next time you're talking to your mom, dad, brother, cousin, um, take like a take a moment in your mind subconsciously and realize how comfortable they are with you and how comfortable you are with them. That's the, that's the exact like feeling you wanna get when you're talking to prospects. So pay attention to the tone of your voice, the speed of your voice, the, how your shoulders are relaxed, the whole nine yards. Take a mental snapshot of your entire you know, body and, and, and feeling and then start to try to em, em, emulate that exact moment when you're talking to your prospects. 
You know, that mo that 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 feeling of, you know, I mean you're not trying to sell your mom a house. You're just trying to check on her. You know? It's the same thing. And when you do this and you build that brand, these people are gonna buy and sell properties. Who are they gonna buy and sell with? The agent that cares about them, that's gonna work the hardest, that's dependable, that you know, like, this stuff in rocket science, you know what I mean? The problem is nobody wants to do what I'm saying. Nobody wants to go through those 100,000 calls.